Hey, 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 guys, out to these fellas here, your voice manager. I unmute the voice of Renwin, who are ready to speak up about what has kept them silent for way too long. Super excited about this episode of the Speakeasy podcast. Guys, let's just be real. Let's be honest. Are you eating healthy while in quarantine? Because I think most of us are not. I'm trying no. to. I'm trying my best, guys. I promise you I am. But but the chips and dip, they call them my name. <laughs> got a child that bakes. So I just, I don't know what to tell you guys. I've been, exactly. I've been working on it though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's super excited to talk to you guys about today's, um, with today's guest, simply because I think right now is the, is the best time ever for us to look at our own health and wellness routines, not just that, but, you know, are we even paying attention to the signs? We right. know what signs they are because it's very important and valuable for us to do so. We're also going to dibble and dabble a little bit into the fact that they say African-Americans are contracting uh, COVID at a higher rate because of some of these diseases that we're not really mm-hmm. talking about or paying attention to. So with that being said, I'm super excited about getting into today's episode. Make sure that you listen in and tell us how this episode resonated with you. So that part. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Danielle. <laughs> I am super excited to have you here. Um, let you. everyone know a little bit about yourself and then we'll dive into today's topic. Once again, my name is uh, Danielle Batiste. I'm the mother of one. I'm an Army veteran. I work at the VA hospital, and I'm a type 2 diabetic. And I just started my own um, company, my Facebook page, Diabetes Made Better, where I wanted to change people's mindset and also give a little education about diabetes. Um, It's not a death sentence, only if you make it a death sentence. And so I just wanted to change um, people's mindset. And, I, you know, and I wanted to reach out to others like myself so we can make a difference. And I wanted, and I wanted to be the advocate for diabetes so we can, we can learn together. We can, we can do this together. It's so important, even when we think about right now with COVID, I think it was kind of like the discussion went like split down the middle when they right. started saying that African Americans were at a higher risk because of some of the health issues. And we know that diabetes, yes. mm-hmm. heart disease, these are some of the things that we really should be talking about, but we still don't. We're not. We're not. And I'm, like I said, I'm a diabetic and I'm also asthmatic. So I have two strikes against me. And COVID, of course, attacks the respiratory. And I'm already compromised. I'm compromised two ways. So I'm definitely vigilant on what I do, where I go, uh, you know, wear my mask, you know, things like that. But with diabetes, you have to be careful. I mean, it, it goes back to just being with myself, you know, myself in general. Um, I'm not the big... I change everything that I'm eating to, you know, just everything is strictly diabetes recipes, you know, that I see all the time, you know, you know, I, I bake and I just, I'm into looking at how many carbs I'm putting into my body, how much sugar I'm putting into my body, you know, how all of that is affecting my body now. Uh, I love my Freestyle Libre now because I can check my sugar at any time. What affects me, <laughs> now I know, I'm like, oh, I ate too much white bread that day. And I'm like, oh, I knew I should have had that wheat bread. But, you know, I wanted to splurge. <laughs> so I was like, okay, no more white bread. So that's why I say everybody have to know their own body. So um, you, when when you compromise your glucose levels and let them drop and things like that, yes, you are hurting yourself. Um, COVID has no no color, no fa- face. It has nothing. So it's going to attack whether you have diabetes or not. But by us having diabetes, we have a a fight. Our fight is just a little bit harder because we 
we are a higher risk. And so we have to take care of our bodies a little bit, you know, a little bit more uh, than somebody that doesn't have uh, diabetes. Um, a lot of people come in by me working here at the hospital. I, I already see they're like, well, I'm already compromised. So what more can it do? Okay, why, why are you thinking like that? So what you mean, what more could it do? I mean, it can, it can kill you. Your diabetes is not the thing that's killing you. It's the COVID because you're already thinking you're dead already. Just because you have diabetes and COVID. I mean, the it's the mindset. It's the mindset. So they figure, oh, I have this. Mm, let, let this, this ain't going to do nothing. Let this take me out, you know? And that, that's just the thinking of some people that I've run into. So... No, COVID is not taking me out with diabetes or not. And then you have to stay, keep your body moving. Exercise, exercise. I walk every day. If I can, if it's not raining, I'm walking. I do more, and that's just me. I do more than 30 minutes of exercise. <laughs> I walk for about an hour, 15 minutes sometimes. Sometimes an hour and 45. But I'm keeping my body moving. I have, I have to, because I don't want my glucose to affect me. But another thing that you also have to do when you, you want to exercise, because I, I, I always talk to my doctor. That's another thing. You have to have the rapport with your doctor. And I asked her, how much do I have to do or what my sugar has to be for me to get out there and exercise? And she'll give me my number, say your sugar shouldn't be 200 or it shouldn't be 250. If it's, if it's way up there, no exercise. Or, or, or if it's 150 or, you know, something like that, you don't need to be exercising. But my sugar has been in great ranges. <laughs> I got my A1C down to 5.7. And that was my last three months. I have to go in now and get the recent three months. And my goal is to be in the threes <laughs> or the twos for my A1C because I'm working. I'm doing the work that it takes to beat this disease. I'm not going to let this disease beat me. But I also love the fact that now with this easy freestyle livery, I know if I ate something, what it was that shot my glucose up. And I'm also learning and reading the glycemic index. What's on that glycemic index? Oh, that's the quickest thing that affects your sugar. Are you glucose? A lot of people like to say that uh, messes with your glucose. Is that glycemic index? Oh, that did it. I can't eat that. <laughs> so it's it's just people mindset on what they think about the di diabetes and what they think about COVID since they already feel that they compromise already. But it's not everybody. It's not everybody. So that's so very important. I know one of the things that you hit on was the mindset. Because a lot of times the mindset that we have when it comes to our health is a mindset right. that we really picked up from our family. It's a mindset we picked up as a child. What were some of the habits, um, the unhealthy habits that mm -hmm. we picked up as a child? And so what would you say to those who are saying, you know, well, I've always lived my life like this. You know what? I, I had that mindset too, because I always... Um, live my, my life on fried food everything was fried it never was baked or you know grilled or anything like that so if you have that mindset that you you have to cook this way but then when you get that diagnosis like I did I went into denial but once you get that diagnosis then you have to sit down there and think with yourself and be like do you want to live or do you want to die and you have to get there and you have to change it because diabetes is basically you. It's on you. And you have to decide what you want to do. Change. Once, once you start reading about diabetes slowly and you start listening to other people that have diabetes and what they're doing and how they're living and how easy it is, slowly but surely, your mind will start changing. Because there's, there are some people that I have been talking to and it was like, you motivate me to do what you're doing. And I was like, thank you. I got through to one person. Thank you. And my goal is to get through to many others. And like I tell them, I'm not perfect. Because sometimes 
that sugar craving is so strong <laughs> and I just want a piece of candy. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes I do take a piece of candy because I'm human. But when I take that piece of candy, my body lets me know that's your last piece of candy that you're going to get. So you can, you can change the mindset. Um, Cause some people are susceptible to what you're saying, but some people you just got to just keep going, 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 going until you get it there. But when you start talking about, do you want to live or do you want to die? It's up to them. Definitely. Is that, are you know, are you going to be reactive or proactive? And, exactly. you know, I think you can really get back to a point of being proactive, especially right now with hearing exactly. everything that has been put out there and everything that's been said. It's, mm-hmm. even if it's not, and this is one of the things I had to say to people, I said, even if it's not 100% true, mm-hmm. you still have to say, are we really having the health talks that we need to have? Are we really taking care of our bodies in the way that we need to right. take care of our bodies? And if not, how do we fix that? You know, where do we go from here? Right. So it's it's definitely been uh, an interesting scenario because guys you guys speak easy podcast listeners you've heard this in the news you've seen it across social media you've seen it mm-hmm. in the newspapers magazines this is a hot button topic right now it is and a lot of people that i've run to here they're not being told about covid and then their high risk um information because basically I haven't even been asked personally I haven't even been asked if I'm a high risk patient or or person and I'm still working around people that's positive I haven't even been asked I should have been the first second (laughs) whatever to been asked are you high risk and I have it. So I have to take it upon myself to protect myself because nobody else is protecting me. So you're right. It, it's, it's, it's a hot topic, but you, you have higher ups are not talking to us, not asking us anything. So you have to protect yourself. That speaks volumes. That's one of those things, pieces of it that is not really being discussed right now is the fact that we do have, we have people who are on the front line who are at high risk. We have people who are on the front line who are, you know, that they're risking it all. I mean, and even if them, them personally, they don't have the, you know, issues with their health, they have family members. And so I know that there was a story on Facebook of one man who he's, driving and whatever he's carrying is connected to the COVID virus. And so he cannot go home, he cannot go inside his home. So he's a tent in his backyard. Like imagine that being your temporary normal that you can't go into your own home that you paid for Mm -hmm. because of this. And and probably have kids, kids, kids or anything. So that hurts. And then I go home and my son is an asthmatic. So I have to be very careful when I get home, you know, to, to do my preventive measures, go fully into my house because I'm trying to stay negative. I'm trying to be preventive, you know, because nobody else is doing it, you know, for me. I have to do it. I have two strikes already. But like you say, this thing is out here. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not taking aid. It's, it's taking everybody. It's just doing this thing. So you have to be your own preventive person. And, that, and us diabetics, we have to do, continue doing what we're doing to stay on top. You know, keep our... Um, sugar levels low keep our stress levels at a minimum keep exercising we have to keep doing what we was doing before covid because we can't let our body go down so we have to keep doing what we're doing and we can't have our um, glucose going up and down you know that's that's not good and stay hydrated we have to keep doing what we have to do definitely it's keeping up with the fight 
you know, even even yes. the fight unseen. And we matter of fact, that yes. might be we might change the title and say the fight unseen. Fight unseen, yeah. Right? Because <laughs> that's basically what it is. It's the fight unseen, you know, because we don't we're not in those areas to be able to see right. what people are going through. So it is the fight unseen. The fight unseen, yes. And yes. and I think another piece of it is that you know, we don't really know where this is going to go. So when we're talking to those who are on the front lines, such as yourself, it's like, okay, there's an uncertainty there because we don't know how long we're going to be wearing masks. We don't know how long we're going to have to test people, mm -hmm. um, especially with folk going and, and coming and you don't know who has it, who doesn't, who's a carrier. Exactly. It's almost like we're in a movie. Exactly. Exactly. And I and I wanna, you know, just um clarify, I'm not a nurse, but I'm a uh MSA and I'm at the front doors screening people that come in and out. So yes, I'm still at the front, you know, before they get to where they need to go. I'm under the tent, I'm doing things like that. So I'm still right there talking, screening. So whoever's positive, I still have to let such and such no but yes i'm still basically yes at the front line but i just wanted to clarify that you know i'm not a nurse but i'm still at the front line before you get to the nurse you know or the doctors so yes i'm still in a um not a good situation but you know you know the duty calls but like i said i still have to protect myself because nobody else is protecting me and i'm like okay i'm high risk why am i out here but <laughs> so like exactly. you say fight so, unseen <laughs> now that makes me go go back and say so in this in this moment like are you are you jotting things down like how are you once you leave the job how are you going and detaching yourself from everything that you just endured everything that you just saw or the conversations that may be you know being had how do you go especially being a mom how do you mm -hmm. go home and be able to like the physical we can wash our hands right we can right wear a mask in the house or you know we can have our kid wear a mask in the house but the mental how do you go ahead and kind of flush that out for you to be able to have a regular home life Right. For me, once I, you know, once I got the door and I make it home, you know, I'll be like, thank you, God, for another day. I made it home. I, I, I did a job. Thank you. And I'm like, whew. I take a, I just like, whew, a breather. I'm like, I'm away from there. And I'm like, just, I just stand there at the door and I'm like, it's just like, my mind is just swirling, you know, because it's like, I haven't seen all of this. And it's just like, how do you process, you know, it's like, how am I, I processing this and still able to drive home, come in here, do what I need to do. And it's just like, whew, it's just like, it's, it, I would call it a walking robot. You know, I'm just still doing it. Because I guess from the military, and then when my husband had deployed, and I had a one-year-old, and I was going through things um, with him when he was, by the time he made it four, when I wrote the first book, Crying Out, I was going through stuff with him. So I guess all that was just, I was robotic. So it, just, it still feel like I'm just robotic. I want, so is that the new book? Because see, I need, I need that. To be <laughs> Listen, Speakeasy Podcast listeners, you're hearing it first, okay? I, we need, we need a book. We need a book, okay? Because that is, man, we think about how that can touch so many different people. Because a lot mm -hmm. of times that's what it feels like. It feels like we're kind of like on autopilot. Yes. Trying to get through the day and... Mm -hmm. It that's, wasn't supposed to be like this, y'all. That's, no, that's I think that's where no. the 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 hardest piece for us to swap. Right. Is. <laughs> it's we, like wow. twenty goals. Vision. I know. It's like, <laughs> like woo, 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 wow. 
I don't, I don't know, but like it's just like it's robotic. I'm like, and then when I go to bed, it's just like I crash. I'm, I'm done. And and like getting up in the morning, it's like oh, I have to do this again. So you just just do it. I guess it's just that military man. So. Well, I want to thank you for your service, not just the military piece, but thank you for your service in being someone who is on the front lines. You know, I think right. the thank you. we've seen um, during this pandemic is we've had the ability to realize that we miss a lot of people when we say thank yous. We miss the mailman. We miss right. uh, the person who's at the front desk signing people in. We miss greeters. Mm-hmm. We miss... We miss so many people who are in between. Yes, the doctors and nurses are on the front lines, but they're not the only ones. And right. so, you know, the caregivers and things of that nature, it's it's valuable, especially because those that you are helping at the VA hospital, man, there was already, you know, a stress yeah. and strain on you guys and a pull on you guys because of what they deal with coming in, right. you know, at with with being a vet. Yes. <laughs> so yes, that's definitely. That is, woo, man. Oh, the, the a vast. lot. <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. It definitely is. So we yes. definitely thank you for what you are doing and those who are beside you as well. Um, thank you. I always ask everyone, you know, in this journey, and and I, I you know. I know Speak Easy podcast listeners right now are like, did she just give her like a book title and tell her to write another book? Listen, <laughs> you don't understand. When things drop, you you go, okay, that's that's supposed to be a that's, book. That's supposed to be yeah. <laughs> somebody's gonna need that. <laughs> but, um with that being said, when you did the first book, what what led you to do the first book? Actually, I didn't plan on doing a book at all. The first book, I heard a voice say, do a book. I ignored it. It came back. I don't know how fast or what the time frame was in between, but I heard it again to do a book. And that's when I got down um, pen and paper and just started writing. And it was flooding. And I was like, I can't keep up. <laughs> so, so that's how Crying Out became a book. So it was a crying out separation anxiety and the soldier's child came out. And right now uh, we are in the works of turning that into a movie. And I was about my four year old son at that time. Couldn't um, accept the fact that his dad was gone on deployment and he had separation anxiety and I'm a first time mom and I didn't know what was going on and he was in daycare and they were calling me three, four times a week to come back to the daycare to come and either get him or try to um, get him straight or I'm like, uh, I sound like, he, I'm like, he's only four. Y'all can't handle him. So, but I was doing that for six months. So that's how uh, Crying Out became a book. So, <laughs> it's a great tip. So those of you who are listening in, you know, first and foremost, when you get that little inkling, when you get that little that little nudge, mm-hmm. it, it remember that when you write that book, it's not just for you, but also right. the opportunities that come along with that. Yes, y'all just heard Danielle say that it's about to be a movie, so we're on the lookout <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna be looking out for that as well. Uh, yeah. That's amazing, though. And it, it just goes to show when we're obedient to, you know, that inkling or, you know, that, that mm-hmm. voice and, and we go ahead and do it where it can lead us and what opens up, you know, right. depending upon, you know, if we go ahead and do it the way we're supposed to or sometimes we do it a little grudgingly, but right. <laughs> we never know where it's going to definitely lead us. So congrats. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and now you got a movie coming out and a new book. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, <laughs> we rocking and rolling over here. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Um, but I, I, I love everything about that. Guys, Speak Easy Podcast listeners, you know, 
I love bringing you um, people who you may not have known, that you may have never heard of, but that their story resonates with you. And so some of you probably are in a space where you've had that feeling that it's time to tell your story. You've had that, that inkling that is something that you need to share. Definitely make sure that you connect um, with the right people so that way you can get that message out. So then, mm-hmm. you know, let them know how they can reach out to you and where they can find you online. I'm on uh, Facebook. And that's uh, Danielle Baptiste hyphen bond. I'm also, uh, I have a website, www.daniellebaptiste.com. And also my email address is dmbaptiste at yahoo.com. Great. Guys, you know, th- listen, first and foremost, health is very important. Your health is your wealth. And so make sure that we are taking care of ourselves mind, body, and spirit, so that way we can be our best selves for clients, our family, but so we can make it through each and every day. Uh, Also, make sure that you're connecting with the right people. It's definitely very valuable uh, that, you know, you make the right connections because guess what? You know, it's it's not about what you know. Sometimes it's about who you know, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you never know who's going to be sent to speak into your life. Um, about any situation. And so with that being said, Danielle, what's your final word that you would like to leave everyone with? I would like to leave everyone with, um, basically, like you said, um, if there's something that you want to do, go ahead and do it, get it out there, because what your story can help someone else. And that's what I thought when I wrote my second book, which was Let Go of My Glue Close. I wanted people to know my story about diabetes because I went into denial about my diabetes when I was first diagnosed. And I don't want anybody to go into denial. As soon as you're told about that diagnosis, I want you to get into the mind frame that you can beat this diabetes, start reading about it, start educating yourself about it, and get on top of it. Don't let it get on top of you. So if you have anything that you want to get out, let people know about it, do it. Do not do it like I did and go into that denial. And please stay safe. Um, doing this COVID-19, wear your mask, wash your hands, just please be safe and um, stay home. <laughs> the wise, wise words that we all need to take advantage of right now. <laughs> Super excited, guys. Oh my goodness. Make sure that you're sharing out this episode. Make sure that you're talking about it and talking it up. We want to make sure that we're bringing you content that is starting conversations within your home, within your business, within your life. With that being said, I'm your host, Out to these Pelzer, your voice manager. And until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya. <laughs>